Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, it actually everybody. said 37 in the center of that. October, we just moved to 38 years on television. Are you going to change it or what? Uh, I put the request in, but it, it's... Maybe next year. It's kind of like <laughs> snails. You know what I mean? Uh, we have a wonderful guest. Yes, we do. And she has a wonderful name. Well, that's not... Most people wouldn't know the difference. Would know that, right? Well, I want that she doesn't have a wonderful well, name. Well, she's got a wonderful name, but are you going with her last name? Yeah, yeah. Sue, yeah. I love I love easy names. but Only Mennonites understand it. <laughs> this, this is true. Her last name is Duttweiler. Duttweiler. Yeah, Duttweiler. And as uh, soon as I, because I always go through the books before I okay them, and I, I look at this and I go, Duttweiler. You know, that is so funny. Well, well, Sue, welcome, Sue, before I'm I get so into my story. I'm so glad to be here, yes. <laughs> I can take a shot of you. Uh, uh, but, you know, when, when he first... Uh, we first got together and he came up to meet my family and everything um realized you know we were a mennonite my dad's family was mennonite yoder <laughs> said he'd never live in buffalo but he <laughs> ended up living there for 13 years yeah. so he got to know the mennonite side of the family you know so the, the funny part to me is that he knows the name that well, yeah. because well <laughs> it's mean, not his background I mean, at all like the name fry uh, Listen to him. Von Traeger. I mean, all of these, all these are <laughs> and all these and German yeah. names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's all stuck in his head. Oh, it's just yeah. amazing yeah. to me. And uh, so I went to the Mennonite Church with her. That was an experience. Hi, Sue. Sue Detweiler. <laughs> yes. She is with us today. Yeah, no, she is a wonderful. I mean, she is a great writer. My yes. goodness, can you write? Mm. Goodness gracious, you have. A phenomenal gift. When did you learn that you could write like that? You know, it really was my father that called it out of me. Wow. He saw that I had a gift of writing, and before he died, it was one of the things that he really spoke into me. And he said, you have a gift here, and it's important that you develop it. So I, I feel like Isn't, it's from a father's blessing. Don't that's you love wonderful. that coming from I a dad? Do. I'm very thankful. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's just I'm precious. I'm very thankful. Let me tell you about Sue while Dave is yeah. showing her face. <laughs> there she is right there. Sue Duttweiler is a wife, a mother of six. Count them. Six. <laughs> that's wonderful. All yours? No, two adopted. Okay. Four biological first. Okay. Yeah. Well, God bless you. Well, that's a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Author, radio host, pastor with more than 25 years experience in leadership ministry and education. She's dripping with brains also. She is also a popular speaker who shares her heart and wisdom internationally on issues related to marriage, family, women, prayer, leadership, ministry. She and her husband Wayne have, a, have recently relocated to Frisco. That's correct. Texas. So see my Texas boots? Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm a Texan yes. now. <laughs> yes, right. uh, to plant Life Bridge Church in north, north of Dallas. That's right. So how many miles from your church to Dallas? You know, Dallas is something that's usually not measured by miles. It's usually measured by time. Really? Yes, in the sense that so you're it's, an a, hour from it's a half an hour with no traffic and an hour with traffic. <laughs> okay. so you Very really are, good. I like that. So you that. really are close. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're on the northern edge, but really Dallas is a metroplex yeah. of 90 miles by 70 miles, If mm -hmm. you, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's yeah, huge. it's a huge. I never will forget, we did a National Religious Broadcasting, or was CBA, Christian C Book yeah. Summers, and I did interviews and we were staying in this hotel. Actually, half, I walked from the hotel to the car that I had rented to go to the location where we were doing the shows. <laughs> It was so hot oh. that, honestly, yeah. I, I thought I wasn't breathing. I know. It was that hot. It was like, I can't feel that's my That's what he remembers about it because it was <laughs> like, that's, that's, <laughs> so hot. I mean, it gets hot here, but I, something about that day it, was it like. It might have been a hot day. There. I mean, you could have fried <laughs> eggs on the, on the pavement, no question. You know, I thought that when we moved from Nashville, Tennessee, that I wouldn't like the weather. I was concerned about how hot. Right. I love it. 
See, I there you go. It. It's like having summer all year round. And so you're out most of the year, and then there's just two months, July and August, that you use the air condition. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> See, she's happy with that's it. Why, that's I love why, it. That's I love why it. Dallas has the yeah. largest per capita of millionaires in America. I mean, you've got more millionaires. There really is an entrepreneurial spirit in Dallas. You know, when they talk about everything's big in Texas, yeah. yes. it is. Yeah. And one of the things I love about crossing the Mississippi is that that expansion, that pioneer spirit. And you can it's feel still it there. The people. Yeah, it's yeah. still there. Do you like mm -hmm. walking out on the platform and seeing thousands of women waiting to hear you speak? You know, I think it's so important to not worry about if you're speaking to one or thousands. That That's really good. it's Jesus Christ in you and the message, the message is the same, you just adapt it for whether you're speaking mm -hmm. to a larger yeah. platform mm -hmm. or you're speaking. Do you get nervous? I don't. I really do not. Can you inject that in me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you put that in a shot can, form and just... I think once I step into a place of ministering and the Holy Spirit is moving, I mm -hmm. am, I'm not self-conscious. I'm not thinking about myself. But I want to tell you, I didn't start that way. Because when we planted the church, and you've already brought up my Mennonite background, right. we were sent out to plant our first church, and I was the youngest woman ordained and I co-pastored with my husband, and I had never heard a woman preach before. Mm -hmm. And so I did it, and my knees would shake, my hands would shake, and, but I knew that I was called. And that was another thing that my father spoke into me, which, you know, as a, a Mennonite man, for him to just, to call out my gifting, I'm so thankful for that. That's You're, that's yeah, it's unusual. Really, it's, I was gonna say it, unusual for, of, for fathers, for one thing, but for a Mennonite father yeah. to tell, to, you know, to speak to you that way and to uh, and talk about all the gifting that God had given you. She That's had the, amazing. She had the it best looking amazing. father you've ever seen. <laughs> I, mean, I believe it. He was, it. He was, he was like it. six foot and, and he, he was, he was just the yeah, sweetest, yeah. kindest man. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And, and he, mm -hmm. and he uh, looked at her like this was his favorite. <laughs> I mean, oh. all the other sisters watching, sorry. but, but I, mean, I was the oldest, yeah. so a lot of times the oldest. Yeah. So I really think people felt that way. My brothers might have felt that way with my dad. I was the only girl. There you go. But he really saw, I have a lot of his gift mix. Wow. And so I remember driving down the road and him saying, you're just like me. And he called out the gift mm -hmm. of leadership, even though I was a female, wow. which is again, yeah. very yes. unusual. Yes. But, but he, he saw, saw that, it. see, he saw he that. Saw it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. Your book has many, many chapters. It even goes <laughs> into part two, but I, I just give you a little taste. And we're gonna jump around because obviously mm -hmm. I can't cover the whole book. Uh, I believe is one chapter, uh, learning to pray with faith. Another, I am chosen, learning to pray with conviction, uh, I am healed, learning to pray healing prayers. I am honored, uh, learning to pray with grace. I am secure. And then I can't read you all of these because I could go on and on. But <laughs> it, it, is, it is a, but what, yeah. you know, I read a lot of books. Yeah. A lot of guests, over 2,000 in, yeah. in 38 years. Actually, it's more than that now. Mm -hmm. But, but what, as soon as I start reading the book, I go, okay, this person is well versed in how to, how to create chapters and then have material. So it is well done. I really give the credit to the Lord on this. This was a very difficult book to write. And there were moments that the Lord gave me a picture of an acorn, you know, that, that an acorn takes a while to grow. True. And it was so difficult to write it at times. My, my mother who's with me, she's 80, almost 81. I'm not kidding you. I don't, know if, very I don't pretty. know if they can get a shot yeah. of her. Yeah. <laughs> she looks 60. I know, she looks great. It is amazing. Yeah. She wow. was my prayer warrior during this time. At times, um, now she lives with us, and so I would go oh, okay. into her room, I'd take my typewriter, 
um, because I already had a contract I needed to write this book, and she would pray as I wrote. It was a, it was a really difficult, because part of what I'm wanting to do is create a healing process, to a journey for people mm -hmm. that are overcoming mountains of fear, rejection, you know, abandonment, terrible things from their past, which there's so many of us oh, yeah. that have gone through things. And God's healing and His process is often step by step. And so mm -hmm. I, can you tell I'm a teacher by yes, reading this? absolutely. Um, <laughs> no and, question. And part of, most of the writing that I've done in my life was actually within the local church. I oversaw a, a school of ministry, life school of ministry. And so I saw firsthand how students needed to learn. And often the learning has to do with, especially when you're overcoming mountains, um, taking the lies that we believe in our heads and the process uprooting it with the power of prayer and the power of God's word. And so uh, one of the gifts that I bring to writing is that I have taught every book of the Bible and I've taught theology. And, and that comes through when I write, but I'm wanting each person that reads this book to discover God through the word and to encounter God through the word of wow. God. Do, do you know how gifted you are? Well, that's, that's the Lord himself calling, isn't it? it it's mm -hmm. the Lord. Um, it's the Lord um, taking a little Mennonite girl that said to him from Isaiah, here am I, send me. Mm -hmm. I, he'll use all of us. He, if, we, if we step out in faith and do what he's called us to do, wow. he'll do that with each one. I, I can't imagine all the different women that you've come in contact with and all the different mm -hmm. stories. Yeah. What seems to be maybe one of the biggest problems that you've heard about that women are having today? I don't think I can talk about one because if you think about these chapters, mm -hmm. every one of them started with a really difficult thing. So one of them came, Marty, for example, my friend, her dad was a convicted rapist. Yeah. Oh. And so she grew up, you know, in the house of her mother and her mother would say, I don't want you and she was molested by her mom's partners. And, and then she comes to a place of getting married and all of this is inside of her. <laughs> and her husband in three months said, I love you, honey, but I can't stay married to you unless you change. And that's when she walked into the church. She mm -hmm. was desperate for change. And one thing about Marty now, she won the award from the governor, I think, in Texas, because she now goes into prisons and she helps rehabilitate those that are molesters. And she helps. She works with molesters. Yes, she goes into the prison and teaches and, and is eye to eye with them. And, and what God does when we take these horrible things that we didn't deserve, the pain, and the very places of pain become the place where God's power comes through when we surrender. Wow. Prayer, praying with confidence, boldness, and grace. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. how do you pull that off? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the first chapter. And, and you know what, I, I, I've heard this, that when, like Sue, when the first chapter comes together, that's the hardest because it's almost like when you push something downhill, that first push, you get going. This is your push. Mm -hmm. so how do you do that? Praying with confidence, boldness, and grace. We are called to be confident in God's word. We are called to do what Jesus said. He said, speak to this mountain and the mountain will move. If you, you believe and you don't doubt in your heart. Now, now yeah. Sue, so, so <laughs> we both know that ain't gonna happen. Mm. But the mountain, right? It could be drugs, pornography. That's it. What I, you know, that's that's, that could be your mountain. But some people get the idea, okay, I'm gonna stand at Mount Everest and say, <laughs> Move in Jesus' name. Ain't you know, going to happen. Isn't it beautiful how Jesus had language yes. that he spoke in such a way yeah. 
that he surprised people, yeah. shocked people. Yeah. And he did that in such a way to invite them to engage in the principle. And if you notice, the mountains yes. that I'm talking yes. about for women, I'm talking about fear, I'm talking yeah. about rejection, I'm talking about shame, right. I'm talking about disappointment, pain, and loss. Those are mountains that every woman faces and mm -hmm. and I've been told every man a, a lot of men have written this book and I've been hearing from them please the next book needs to be for both men and women <laughs> that's true it's not just women you know, yeah. well, actually, it's not just women I, I don't even think that way when I when I was reading through it mm -hmm. be, be, you know I know you break it out for women or whatever but it's funny when I'm reading that I don't I don't say oh okay I shouldn't read this part because mm -hmm. that's what the word does it's what the word does yeah and it's the transformation that you can see. So another friend of mine, Marta, Marta came to know Jesus when she was lying on an abortion table. It wasn't her first abortion, it wasn't her second, I think it was her fourth. And she's lying there realizing she's just murdered a child. Mm -hmm. And as she's lying there, God speaks to her because she grown up in church. She knew the stories about that Moses was a murderer, that David was a murderer. And God came into that place and she had an encounter with him and came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's on the, the table. Abortion? Yes. On the abortion table, recovering, came to Christ. So someone sewed that into her ahead yes. of time. Her mother Okay. had sewn it into her. Mm -hmm. Her mother didn't know that she'd been abused and she hid that. And, and that's one of the things I'm trying to do in this book. I'm giving voice to women who have felt like they've needed to be silent, that they've gone through horrible, horrible things. And in the church, they haven't been able to be honest because uh, we need to be honest and bring things to the light and have a starting point of where the pain began, but move to healing. And that's why I developed the chapters like I did. Okay, what you got, what we have in our society right now, you know, is all these women coming forward that for years have kept quiet yes. over some kind of abuse, you know, yes. some kind of sexual harassment. Yes. But they're not treating those women like you're saying, mm -hmm. they're not treating them saying it's only through the Lord Jesus Christ, it's only through prayer. I believe it is only through prayer. And for many, I know for myself, when I came to terms with a, abuse that I experienced, there is an anger process that you will go through. But if you stay stuck in that anger process, you'll never move to the place of fulfillment. Do you remember when you released it? I do. I do very, very clearly. And it was in prayer. It was through a prayer ministry, and it was after the, the first thing that happened in the book yeah. is that I, I had this horrible experience as a young mom with a five-week-old baby. I had come home, and I need to tell this story because it was a traumatic turning point in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. I came home, and uh, I put my baby to bed. We'd been on vacation fell into a deep sleep and the next thing I knew I woke up and she was screaming and it was a different scream. You can tell as a mom, <laughs> even a, it's yeah. a different scream and it, I woke up, I was disoriented, I couldn't breathe, I was coughing and if I went this way, this would be the door to the room but somehow I got caught in the closet and I'm grasping for clothes and by that point, I don't even know which direction is out. I can't figure it out. And I go all the way across the room to the window. I put it up, two-story window, put my head out, and I realize that my house is on fire. And that I try to scream for help and hardly anything comes out. And I realize I am completely powerless to even find the doorway to get my baby out. And I do, I drop to my knees. I thought I was gonna die. I thought it was the end. And, and I would not have made it. Mm -hmm. But my husband came home from, <laughs> he was setting up church. It was in Nashville. It was in Nashville. Yeah. And he drove up and imagine how he felt because the whole sky is lit up. In fact, let me just wow. yeah. keep, keep that story. Yeah. If you uh, type in her name, Sue Dutwilder, 
it's mm -hmm. on YouTube on Google. Go to Google, type in her name, and you will see the burning house. Okay, go ahead. Yes, it's, it's horrible what happened. And he drove up, and he's completely overwhelmed. He goes to the firemen. There's only one fireman, one fire truck, and they are holding the hose on the house that had already burned to the ground. It was a house under construction. And my husband grabs him and said, did you get my wife and baby out? And firemen drops the hose. You know, they run to the house. Our neighbors had thought that we were gone. So one of them had wow. thrown rocks at Rachel's window. And that's how she woke up and woke me up because most people just die from smoke inhalation. That's right, sure. that's right. Yeah, so my husband comes in. I can. I didn't know it was him. I'm, I'm screaming as much as I can get my baby out. And that, the truth of it is, I wasn't concerned about myself at that point. I was concerned about my baby. Mm -hmm. And he got her out and then the fireman came around the corner and I, I never saw his face. I'm looking forward to heaven. I hope he's there that I can thank him. But I heard his voice and he said, come towards the light. Wow. And it was like a tiny pin light through, through the smoke. And, and as I went towards the light, I could feel him taking me out. And they rushed us to the hospital. And then after we went through a whole night, horrible night in the hospital, that's when I realized who the hero of the story is. I called my mom. And I'm frantic over the phone. And it's like I, my franticness was put out. I could feel this peace coming through the phone lines. And she said just real quietly, oh, you're who I've been praying for. And she had taken a month to fast and pray and the scripture that God had put on her mind was from Isaiah 43, you will go through the fire and you won't be wow. burned. The flames won't consume That's you. That's wonderful. Wow. That's when I learned about the power of prayer. Yeah. Prayer yeah. is life and death. So you yeah. and baby both fine. Oh, my baby. Oh, <laughs> you know what? She's 27 now <laughs> oh. and she's got a baby, my oh. grandson. Yeah. yeah. But yes, we were fine. I, I wish I could say it got better. Truthfully, that launched us into the worst part of my life. You know, because we didn't have a home, we didn't have diapers, a crib. We're fighting with the insurance company to have things covered. I was over the top stressed. And then Rachel started to cry every night for about three hours. And she had colic and it was inconsolable. We couldn't get her. And I, oh. I remember having these moments because I didn't live near my family. There was one moment where I was so overcome. I'm in a neighbor's house, I put the baby down, and I, I start to back away because I heard, okay, you can shake a baby, you can hurt, you know? And yeah. I'm backing away and I'm thinking, I have got to get out of here. And I, I was the pastor's wife, you know? My <laughs> husband and I were the pastors. You're supposed to handle anything. I know, but I was so overwhelmed and that's what led me to healing. Because often we don't know we need help. And I remember going into a session to pray and to forgive the arsonist that had set my house on fire and forgiveness. And I'm sitting down with a couple of people and we're praying. And it was, I was anticipating praying of, of that and God took me back farther mm -hmm. to pray through my childhood pains. Wow. Isn't it something how we're made yeah. that that the the childhood pains often interweave with oh, what absolutely. we're experiencing right absolutely. now and so that's really wow. when i i think the word would be appropriate of, of deliverance yeah mm -hmm. I, I i was set yeah. free you were delivered, yeah you've in fact chapter six learning to pray healing prayers that's yes. chapter six in the book. Mm -hmm. It is because there are times that we have been hurt and wounded and, and we need Jesus to interrupt. Mm -hmm. and, and there was such a ministry and it impacted our marriage, it impacted everything. Sure. We began to thank God for the fire. We would say <laughs> before the fire, 
and after, after the, the fire. fire. Yeah. Oh, it was such a yeah. radical change that, that people could see it on our countenance and mm -hmm. because God had cleaned us out. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm so thankful, I'm wow. so grateful. Could you pray about two minutes left and you can go the whole two minutes by the way. I would love to and pray. Just think of a two minute clock in your head. Mm -hmm. That's your camera right there, but pray for some, yeah. somebody matches what you have just talked about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would love to pray for you and I'm gonna pray with my eyes open and I just want to say to you, no matter what pit you've been in, yeah. no matter what difficulty, things that you haven't deser deserved, yeah. mm -hmm. God is able to come and he's able to heal you. And I do, I want to invite you to get this resource. I know it will make a difference in yeah, your life. Amen. And I pray right now for hope to invade your home. If you've been dealing with rejection, I pray that you would feel the acceptance yes, of God. Yes, yes. If you are overcome by fear, I pray for faith to, what, to well up in your heart and that you would overcome. And I pray if you've gone through any type of abuse or if you've had an abortion or you've made choices, just know he's the forgiver. Yeah. He's the healer. He's the redeemer. So right now I pray for that, that you would experience it and that you would come to know Jesus. Amen. 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 Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. The power of prayer. Women who can move mountains, yeah. and that's the truth. Yeah. We've just met one mm -hmm. that had the mountain. Mm -hmm. Yes. And on the other side of the mountain, victory. Mm -hmm. Not while you're looking at the mountain, but now you're talking about mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. and after. That's what you can experience. God bless you in your decision. Bye-bye. Life is challenging with packed schedules and life's curveballs. Our hearts long for more. We want to live and love well. We want to be a source of joy and life for others. The good news is that we can, and the secret is found in the simple yet profound lifelong pursuit of God through prayer. Prayer was never meant to be a recitation of request, but rather a drawing close to the heart of God. Every journey has a beginning, and the starting point of prayer is God. We don't have to get dressed up and go to church to reverently pray. The God of the universe invites us to come as we are to exchange the obstacles of life for the promises of God, to pray with passion and confidence rather than fear and insecurity, to transform brokenness into wholeness, anxiety into peace, and disappointment into hope. Become a woman who moves mountains. Pray with confidence, boldness, and grace.